Okay, we're going to set up a quick and easy configuration for remote copy. I've already logged into two uh, three pars. One's a, a V400, and the other one's a, an older T400 array. And we'll just go ahead and start from the beginning. Now, the IPs have already been configured on these two systems, so I won't be going over that. But we will be uh, configuring uh, CPGs, virtual volumes, and then a remote copy group. So I'm going to switch to provisioning and then we're going to create a CPG. And if you recall, I'm going to select this top system because that will end up being my source. But if you recall, a CPG uh, just identifies the drive type, which in this case is a fast class. Uh, fast class can either be a fiber channel drive or a SAS drive. And it defines the RAID characteristics. So let's just give it a name here. this one a RAID 5 and make it a 3 plus 1. Next. Finish. And I'll create another CPG. finish. And then on the second array, I'm going to create a CPG on there too. And the purpose of this is when I uh, start the remote copy group, I want to specify uh, which CPGs to replicate into. Create a second one. And this one I'm just going to make raid six. Uh, I'm only just cha I'm changing all these up just so you know that it can uh, write into anything. All right, so now I have uh, four CPGs created uh, for this demonstration. There's two on. Uh, this in serve and two on the following in serve. Now we'll create a uh, virtual volume. And I'll create it on my source array. And specify, let's just make it easy for this testing. Uh, and then I specify my uh, CBG that I want it to go into. We'll use that one. And then the uh, copy space, uh, remote copy groups uh, require uh, copy space because it takes a snapshot and replicates a snapshot. Okay. Finish. So I've got one volume there. Uh, we'll just create another one. Do two of them. Same, same thing. I'll finish. All right, now let's go ahead and configure the remote copy group. The first thing you're going to do is create a new con configuration, and it's going to ask you for what type of remote copy group you'd like a one to one, a one to many, a many to one, a synchronous long distance. Uh, so the only option available, because I only have two arrays, uh, is the one to one, so we'll select that. And then here I just right click on each one of them and identify which, uh, which two array names. Uh, I could have up to 16 in the Import Management Console, but for this configuration, which two arrays I want to specify. Uh, so here's Array 1, which is the source system, and uh, uh, Array 2, which is uh, named as the target system. All right, next. And this part's pretty easy. I'm just going to drag and drop the IP interfaces. Uh, I'm going to disconnect that so you don't see any fiber channel. There aren't any fiber channel here. Um, 
but let's just go ahead and drag and drop. So I want to connect it there and connect it here. Um, so you can see that the IP information already uh, fills in. You can specify a jumbo frames if you wanted. Next. And then here I'm just going to specify again what the source system is and I'm going to create a remote copy group to get it started. And my target system automatically fills in. Uh, you can go uh, synchronous or asynchronous, asynchronous per periodic. I'm going to specify that. Sync period, let's say every five minutes. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and add um, that group identifier. Click next. And then here, I just need to find those volumes that I had created previously. And here's the two volumes. I'm going to tell it to create a new volume uh, on the target system. And uh, then I need to specify those CPGs that I had created and what it co what its copy CPG would be. There we go. And we'll add that. Okay, so we can see that here's the volume on this system. Here's the volume name, its size, its target system, and the backup system obviously would be the target system, and then the uh, backup target name. And we'll just do the same here. Add. And we have two volumes that are going to be replicating as part of this as part of this group. Next. Um, some more identifying information, click finish, and we'll see all this here build out as it starts to uh, bring up the links and get the synchronization started. Take just a minute, here we go. Okay, so we can see our, uh, we did a periodic group, I can select the group, it'll fill in here. Here's our group. If I select it, here's the two volumes. Obviously there wasn't any data in it, so uh, it took no time at all for these two volumes to sync across the frames. If I go back to uh, provisioning, I can look for those. Uh, this is the target frame. Uh, insert 4 would be the target frame. Nothing's been exported yet, so I can just look for those two volumes, and here they are. So it's created to the two target volumes. I did not create these. I created them on insert 4, or I'm sorry, on insert 3. So it created these and automatically put them in the remote copy group and synced them over. If I look at uh, insert 3, again we didn't export them yet, so uh, I'm going to look in the uh, unexported area. And here's the two original volumes that we created. And so those are synchronizing to insert 4. Okay, so this was uh, just a quick demonstration on how to easily and, and uh, quickly configure a remote copy group. I'm going to switch back to remote copy group. Um, you can see that it's uh, syncing periodic here with a one-way arrow. Uh, if this had failed or if I stopped the synchronization, so let's stop that one. So that's going to stop. You'll notice that this is all uh, going to be updated once it completes. There we go. So the remote copy group has now stopped. And we get a dotted line here. I can fail this over. So now it's going to replicate the other way. Okay, so now it's starting to switch it over. Okay, so now you notice it's replicating back to the original frame. And the volumes, again, there's no data in it, um, but it's now replicating in the other direction. It's recovered from that failure. Simple as that.